Hey everybody, it's Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at Warsaw in Brooklyn today, and today we are here with Kelly of Failure. Thank you for your time, man. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks for uh, giving a crap that I have something to say. Of course, I, we always have a we always give a crap about what you got to say, and you know, having this nice uh, vape like filter and stuff like that. It, yeah, that's got to save you a fortune on production. Just blow that behind the drum kit the whole night. We need one less fog machine. We still have two others for. Ken and Greg. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. But in the future, your body will be the furthest thing from your mind. Is been out now. Full. Yeah, I know. I had to rehearse it for a couple yeah. times before I reviewed it. Yeah. But it came out in November of 2018, so you're well into the record cycle. How was the making of the record and the record cycle thus far? Um, the record cycle being the tour has been actually pretty amazing. I mean, it's especially because we've been working on the record so long, the payoff is kind of getting out here and getting to play it for people and just watching their faces melt. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, as far as the process, I mean, for us, it was a little unique in the sense that we did it in pieces. Like we each had uh, um, stuff going on in our lives that sort of required us to take a different approach to the record. We didn't necessarily have six months to sit in one room and write and record an entire record. So we managed to break it up <clears throat> to sort of, like I said, facilitate, you know, what we each had going on in our personal lives. Um, but it was uh, it was kind of a test to do something in sort of a new way. And, you know, I felt that we came up with a pretty creative way of being able to do that and present it at the same time. Um, so, you know, and I, th I think that that's definitely something that, you know, we always like to feel like we're doing something fresh and new and sort of always pushing ourselves to um, place demands yeah. on ourselves to just sort of rise above what our last record was and how we did it and approached it. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think it, in general, it was successful. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this record has 16 songs on it, so there's a lot of material that this record covers. I mean, was this kind of like a preconceived idea to like just make a record? I think in total, it's like an hour and three minutes, the record or something well, like that. I mean, our previous record was a double record, and Fantastic Planet was a double record. Mm -hmm. So we definitely like to make music. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I mean, we like making albums. You know, to us, like, those are albums. Yeah. You know, like when you were a kid, something you can hold in your hand while you're listening to it and open the gatefold and have a legitimate experience mm -hmm. with it. You know, even in the midst of the Spotify's and the playlists and all of that stuff, we still have a core of people that I think as much as us probably expect that experience, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just kind of become part of what we do. Yeah. Well, I find it interesting because especially with this record, I've noticed that there's many different sounds incorporated. Is it fair to say that like failure um, likes to experiment and try new things when making music and not just stick with like a certain template? Um, well, yeah, certainly. Isn't that what all bands are supposed to do? I mean, there are some bands that they kind of have like a formula that they stick with and you know what to expect. Yeah, that's we're, we're, that definitely isn't our approach. I mean, like I said previously, like we don't, uh, we already made that record. It's behind us and we're doing something new. And I mean, the whole, I think generally the reason we do it is to continue to explore new spaces and new sounds and always put ourselves in a place where there's the unexpected and the journey and finding this thing that we haven't done before. I mean, it has to be compelling to you in order to like love it enough to go through all of the work of here we go doing it again. Like, you know, why do you do it? You do it because it's going to blow your mind. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it, keeps it interesting and keeps people uh keeps people interested and it has to keep it interesting yeah. for the musicians as well, well. and it, i mean it stretches our abilities at the end of making every record we are a better band yeah. because we work you know we push ourselves to do something new yeah um i why would you want to continue doing the same thing i mean that just doesn't it doesn't make sense yeah. to me to us yeah. i think Absolutely. like new is good 
Now, in addition, not only did I notice many different sounds in your catalog, but I've noticed many different vibes. There are some songs that are very optimistic, and then there are some songs that may have like a melancholy touch to it. Is it fair to say that the band feels like maybe different emotions when making music as well, and you portray that in your music? Maybe. I don't know. Um, I, I think for anyone that's ever listened to one of our records in, including myself, there's a lot of cryptic undertones. Um, you never really know what it's about. Um, there certainly was because of personal experience, a lot more personal emotion for all of us in this record that doesn't always translate in a literal sense where I was going through this, therefore this song is about that. Mm -hmm. um, emotionally, it's all tucked in there and the vibe and the feeling of, of the music in general. Um, but the, the words, especially the beauty of, I think, our music is you never really know what it's talking about. So each listener is allowed to have their own perspective and their own personal understanding as to what their journey is, as to what the, the soundtrack means to them personally. Like, what is it saying to you? You know, that thing where three people can see something and all three of those people have a different recollection of what that thing was. Yeah, exactly. Our records are like that. Yeah, and having a... Dis and I, I mean, that's part of... I think the beauty of it and the creative process of it is not having to be so literal where we have to write love songs and spell out the relationship between a boy and a girl. And you know what I mean? It, it's, it's a little more, I mean, for lack of a better word, like there's a lot of cryptography in there um, that I, I think lends itself to each record being personal to each listener. Definitely, because when I was reviewing the record and analyzing it, oh, this song has this, and somebody wrote to me, I disagree, I felt this and that, and I, re I looked yeah. at the record again, and I realized this record is very open to interpretation and different emotions, and I think that's the beauty of it. Well, and I mean, the reason I put it, like, I can't speak for everybody else, yeah. so I can only put it in my own terms, and in all honesty, I don't know what a lot of the songs are necessarily about. I didn't write the lyrics. Yeah. And funnily, funny enough, like sometimes when I ask Greg, it's like, what are you talking about? He'll just like give me a smirk and never really answer the question. I mean, even like stuck on you, I kind of thought it was like, you know, a boy and a girl getting stuck under your skin and like, you know, it just being that thing that you can't stop thinking about. And then 10 years after the band broke up, I was listening to the song and that's not what it's about at all. It's about a hit song that you can't get out of your head. They get stuck underneath your skin. And like that was our single. I mean, the iron, it, like it was, that's exactly what I mean. Like, yeah. I don't even know. And, you know, there are a lot of things about the band and the beauty of it is we all have a creative space to put in our own personal whatever that is it might be your mood for the day it may have been something you had going on a week ago or an idea that you had a year ago or I mean even the title of the record yeah. actually comes from something that Greg we used to have this big board that we would write all ideas and song titles and sort of uh, outline of where we were at in the record as far as songs and what needed to be done work-wise with each song and one of the things that was on there was in the future, like the whole record title. Wow. So when we started this new record, because of just, again, the way we needed to break the record up and do it more of a um, facilitate our personal lives, yeah. but also be able to creatively cre make a record. Yeah. Um, we came up with the idea of doing EPs to create a whole. And we came up with the artwork first so we could split it into four sections. And then we needed a title that we could split a long title that could be split cohesively into four sections. And Greg remembered that thing on the grease board. Yeah. You know, so that's sort of where the title came from. And that was something that was just there. It was never necessarily proposed for anything. It was just like, oh, this is really cool sounding. And it got written on the board. If you don't but mind never me. used. 
If you don't mind me asking, is the album artwork on that kind of like a map out of the board kind of? It kind of looks no, like that. A I mean, bit. The, the, the album artwork is, it's a constellation. Oh, okay. I, it really well, if you cool. look at the album, unfortunately, um, Pri, can you grab me? Are those the vinyl right there? Those are, uh, the Monster. Oh, so the vinyl is, each EP was a, a four song constellation. So you'd get part of the constellation and the stars were the record song, the titles of the songs. Mm -hmm. And then you'd get another section for EP2 and then another section for EP3. And then EP4 was the entire record. So on the front cover, you see all four constellations with the record title through the center of them. When you flip it over, you see the headless spaceman floating in space. That's what the constellation points create. Okay. See, when you were telling me about like the green board and like all that, like I was thinking, like, oh, wait a minute, that could yeah, be. Yeah, no, uh, that this, the constellation and the headless space guy, that all came later at the beginning of the record cycle. Okay. When we were trying to think of like, you know, and I can't even specific. I think maybe Greg came up with it. Yeah. Um, which I gleefully applauded. I've been trying to think of a way to kill the space guy for a long time. <laughs> and I have uh, two more questions but for he you. May or may not be dead. We don't know. It's a mystery. Yes. Maybe it's the space yeah. guy on the new Sleep because, album you know, cover. The space guy is like heavily identified with the band. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we didn't want to be another one of those bands. Oh, they're back and doing a reunion thing. And that wasn't our intention at all. From the gate, we came back and we had new material and we wanted to make a new record and we didn't it was much more than just this, you know, cash grab for a reunion, which yeah. seemed to be a popular thing around the time, which is totally fine. I'm not knocking that. Yeah. We, we had, we had a bigger plan. Yeah. We wanted to keep making records, especially after we started to hear how much we had improved as individuals and how that improved and deepened what we were going to do as a band 17 years later, getting back together for the first time. Yeah. And I have uh, two more questions for you, because sure. being in the rhythm section of the band, drumming, like what I noticed about is with your music, your music is both very rhythm and melody oriented, which I, yep, do it. It's so beautiful. Your music is very rhythm driven and very melodic driven as well. So do you lay down drum beats for the rest of the band to kind of write melody over, or do you kind of like to hear some riffs or chord progressions and maybe write according to that? Um, all of the above. Um, there are, there some songs like Space Song, obviously was written around the drums. Um, uh, Heliotropic. Um, when we got together and started doing, uh, The Heart is a Monster. I mean, it's sometimes yes, sometimes no. On this last record, I have a little electric drum kit set up at my house and I made tons of these just like, 30 second, one minute video of, you know, me recording myself on the phone. Yeah. And I would make a folder of those and I would send them to the guys. There's probably like 30 or 40 of them. Wow. None of them were used. Wow. On the last record, we got together for a time over at Ken's place, which was really kind of a small place when we were starting the recording process and we would do... We would show up at like noon or 11 o'clock and then we would just jam for four or five hours. Like just constant sometimes jam, stream of consciousness, hours and hours and hours and hours of ideas. Sometimes those would start with drums. Sometimes those would start with a guitar riff and I would jump in. Sometimes it would start with a bass riff and somebody would jump in. And any one of those little pieces could be kept and provide the genesis for what would become a song on Heart as a Monster. Oh. Sometimes the drum part would be kept and a new thing would get written over it. Sometimes the guitar riff and completely new drums and new bass would be written over it. Um, so it's this, there is no necessarily a, you can't, it, there is no formula for what we do. The beauty of it is, is the genesis of any song can start in any way. We don't stick to any, and that's how we get a record like what we have, where yeah. it's just this, 
you know, because it's us doing it and we have a very specific sound, they all fit together nicely, but the approach can be completely different from song to song. There is no tried and true method of doing stuff. It's all like anything goes and no one knows. It's like the first time every time. Yeah. Going back Which to what is I... why we keep getting to push the sound and the boundaries a little bit and we keep ourselves personally satisfied. Like we want to continue to make great records and all of that depends on how we each individually feel about what we're calling a record and our performances from song to song. And then we give it to the people that like failure. They may or may not like it. Like that's not our criteria for deciding when we're done making what we believe is a great record. Mm -hmm. That's all we decide. Mm -hmm. It makes and sense. Hopefully everyone else you know, that that's probably the only method that has stuck through all the records. Like, we have to be happy. Yeah. And I think the best uh, method is no method. I think that's what yep. makes it the best. And the final question I'd like to ask you is that I know that I've never seen you guys play before, but... Are you coming tonight? Oh, absolutely. I'm popping the failure cherry tonight. We're going to blow your pumpkin. I, We're uh -oh. very serious about what we do. We're not messing around. Yeah. Well, that's what I meant, because I was overhearing you talking with your tour manager. We work, we work really, really hard to blow people's pumpkins. It's not a foregone conclusion. Like, we're not just so talented that we're blowing everyone away. Like, we're working. Yeah. Well, because I mentioned, I overheard, like, uh, the tour manager, somebody saying, uh, make sure the production's right and everything. So when you're playing live versus, like, in the studio or a practice space, how different totally of an experience? Different. It, I mean, it's totally different when you when you record in the studio. For me personally, the first thing that I always have to consider is my technique. Mm -hmm. Like I'm more mindful of the way I play because when you hit a drum, I mean, there are physics that happen. There are certain parameters that you have to abide by. When you hit a drum too hard, it doesn't sound good. But sometimes hitting a drum too hard is exactly the way you want the drums to sound. Mm -hmm. So there may be a song where I'm like specifically, I'm going to play the drums too hard on this song because it translates a certain energy and there's a certain sound and that's what we're looking for for this song. Mm -hmm. Generally, we want from more of a production standpoint, a little bit more control over the way the drums are sounding and how they're being recorded. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be mindful of, again, like there is no tried and true method. You know, I may go in there playing like, you know, volume wise or technique wise, like a session guy. We might abandon that and I'll play like some 20 year old rocker kid that, you know, is just with complete abandon playing with all of the energy he has like a live show mm -hmm. in a live show. It's always like that. It's always about the energy. It's always about just being massive. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of technique in there, but in the studio, you're under a magnifying glass and you have to be very, very, very mindful and, um, uh, direct um intentional yeah you're very intentional mm -hmm. you get to abandon a lot of that when you play to a live audience and you just get to have a unique like experience of just flying by the seat of your pants awesome awesome so i want to thank you so much for your time thank you yep i'm really looking forward to the show tonight and uh Thanks again. Awesome. Yep. Everybody, we are here with Kelly of Failure. In the future, your body will be the furthest thing from your mind. Pick that up if you haven't already. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Heavy New York. I was saying that yes. over and over and yeah. over again Say on the way. Say that three times really fast. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs>